Hey guys, happy Friday. We are kicking it old school again in today's video. I recently walked by this bag. You guys have seen this bag for years. It's so old and disgusting that like, you don't wanna see this up close. But I hate change, so it's gonna stay the empties bag forever. But the other day I walked by this bag and I realized it was getting real full. It's like hefty and chunky and I think it's time to empty it. So that is what we are doing in today's video. We're going through my beauty junk and we're gonna talk about products I've used up, products that I haven't used up but I'm getting rid of, things I don't want anymore. We're gonna talk all about it right now. By the way, if you are wondering about my makeup, I'm not assuming you are, but if you are, I did post this tutorial on Wednesday. I will link it down below. The only thing different is my lip. I changed my lip color. Cause you know, I have to wear a Pat McGrath contour lip liner every day. So, let's dive in. Okay, so I'm gonna breeze through the products that you see all the time. Like Bioderma, yes. I went through another Bioderma. I'm obsessed with this. It's my favorite micellar water. I've tried every single micellar water under the sun. Ooh, I'm just gonna fill this desk up with my empties. Why not? I also went through a few of the cleansing spa water wipes from Cojun Doe. Love those. Those are like the two staples I always go through. I went through the 4-3 Beauty AM to PM gel cleanser. I won't be re- well, actually this was sent to me. I didn't buy this, but I won't be purchasing it myself. Not because it was bad. It's just not my favorite cleanser. I feel like it would be better for you if you have like normal to oily skin. It wasn't stripping or drying by any means, but I do prefer a cleanser that's a little bit more nourishing. So yeah, it was good, but it was not, not, not for me, you know, not for me. This cleanser, however, is so for me. This is my favorite face wash of all time. This is the Kiehl's Cucumber Herber, what? <laughs> this is the Kiehl's Cucumber Herbal Conditioning Cleanser. Why is that hard for me? This is amazing for dry skin. It's a very calming cleanser. You almost feel like you're washing your face with nothing. You do have to wet your hands quite a bit so you get that lather on your face because if not, it won't like soap up. But even when you get it nice and soapy, it doesn't strip the skin at all. It's so awesome. And I feel like it gets off all of my makeup and it just makes my skin feel clean and soft. I almost hit my face with that. Did you catch that? Okay, so I'm not like 100% done with this. You can kind of tell there's a little bit left, but I've already had this for like a year now, so I need to get rid of it. This is the Warm and Cozy Body Wash from Victoria's Secret Pink. And this is actually the two-in-one wash and scrub. So it's like a a body scrub as well, which is why I bought this. I did like that it was a scrub and body wash in one. And this was my scent in high school, guys, especially when I had to do PE. Ugh. Can you imagine me in PE? Just picture that for a second. It was awful, but I always kept a body spray in my book bag, and nine times out of 10, it was the Warm and Cozy from Pink. This scent is so yummy. It's toasted vanilla and peony, and it smells so, so yummy. It's like sweet and delicious. The scent is incredible, which is mainly why I got it. But yeah, I'm not trying to repurchase this though, because the first three ingredients are water, sulfate, and perfume. So, not the best. I do have other body washes that I find a lot more nourishing and like, cozy and yummy and I feel like clean my body better and they're just awesome, like better than this. So I liked it, but I won't buy it again. The body splash I will buy again though. It's so nostalgic to me. It reminds me of high school. Speaking of high school, I wore this in high school. This is probably my favorite perfume to ever exist and it's discontinued, they no longer make it. I love how I get so upset about that, but like, I mean, this. This perfume is old, old, old. I think my sister wore it in high school, which is how I was introduced to it. This is Gucci 2. I don't know if there's a Gucci 1, but this is Gucci 2. It's so crazy to me how after so many years, this is still my number one. And you know I am a perfume connoisseur. I'm obsessed with it. I love buying perfume. I love collecting it. And still, I feel like this one is so special, so unique, and it lasts an incredible amount of time. This is one of my most long wearing perfumes ever. And I actually do have one left. I'm, I have one in my collection because you were still able to buy this on Sephora up until like six months ago. So I have one that's not gonna be around for too much longer because I'm sure it will be expired soon. <laughs> but I put it on every once in a while and it just takes me back. Oh my God, no, no perfume makes me time travel. Well, that's not true. Cerruti makes me time travel. But this one too. Cerruti is the one I wore in middle school. But I love this so much. It's such a good perfume and I'm so bummed it's gone. I hate the packaging though. Oh my God, it's so bulky. Another thing that was discontinued. This is the Marula Intensive Hair Treatment and Styling Oil. It's silicone free, color safe, tames frizz, repairs. I used to love this so much. It was like my favorite hair oil. It didn't weigh my hair down. It was curly girl friendly, silicone free, look at that. And it was just 
incredible it smelled good it was so good i don't know why it is no more such a bummer because it is awesome i went through a bunch of mascaras as you can imagine I, I'm free, I feel like I went through more than this, but this is the NYX on the rise volume lift mascara I love this mascara. It's really really good. It keeps your curl in place for a really long time That's one thing I noticed about this one My lashes wouldn't fall throughout the day with this You know how sometimes like you look at your lashes at the end of the night and they're like Rrr. this one kept the curl This is the Gigi Hadid fiber mascara. I held on to this for as long as I could This was one of my favorite mascaras ever so incredible I wonder if they have this fiber mascara just like not Gigi Hadid. Like, do they make this fiber mascara by itself? Because I really liked that you would do like the mascara on one side, then do the fibers, and then do the mascara again, and it would make your lashes look crazy. And honestly, those fibers um, kind of stay stuck in your mascara, and it can get clumpy a little bit faster than normal mascaras, but I loved it so much. I held on to it forever. This came out like five years ago. The Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara from L'Oreal is one of my favorites. Super volumizing, really, really black really thick really good this is the elf mascara that was in collaboration with jay kissa the cutest packaging ever there's like little doodles all over it i love this packaging and this is their brown mascara it was really nice it was like the perfect day-to-day -day mascara i love the color and this is the milani highly rated mascara this one is like eh, it was okay i don't i don't see myself like buying it it's like, all right, this mascara was sent to me, by the way, and like, it was good, but it wasn't great. Okay, so one more makeup product, and then the rest is skincare slash hair care, obviously. I finished the Glossier Boy Brow. I love this. This is one of my favorite brow products. I used to be such a hater of this product, but I really grew to love this, and I actually love using it with their brow flick. I use mine in the shade Brunette, and this is just a tinted brow gel that has little fibers in it, so it makes your brows look a little thicker, a little bushier, which I like. The only thing is that it doesn't stay in place all day, but I do really like the formula. I mean, and it, it stays put enough, you know? It's just not as intense as my Nude Sticks brow gel. That's like crazy. I went through a Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil from Drunk Elephant. I know this is very pricey. That's expensive. But I do really love this. I've tried other oils on my face and I feel like nothing gives me the glow and that moisture and that feeling like Marula oil does. I really enjoy this on my skin. And I'm sure that there's other brands that have Marula oil that are more affordable than this, but this is just the one that I use all the time. I love Drunk Elephant and I really love this oil. This is like my skin savior whenever I have super, super dry skin. Like when I came back from New York, my skin was like <laughs> <laughs> and so I used this for like two nights in a row and it brought my skin back to life. So I love this. It's my moisture pick-me-up. I'm obsessed. Speaking of that's expensive, probably the most expensive like serums, toner, essence, water thing that I've ever used is like a hundred bucks. Um, you don't need this. You don't need this. I finished it. I, fin I almost finished it. There's like a little bit left. That's probably like $20. I could probably use this one more time. But this is the Tatcha Essence. It's an anti-aging complex. It's a concentration of pure micronutrients. It softens and plumps the skin with deep hydration while maximizing the performance of the Tatcha skincare ritual. I don't use this with strictly Tatcha products, obviously, and I still find that it works beautifully. You can call this overpriced water. You can, and perhaps you should, but I really, really enjoy this. This is my, my number one skincare product, but it's so incredible it does make my skin softer more hydrated more plump i use this much and i use it sporadically because it is so damn pricey and this is not something i'm trying to waste so i wouldn't know if i would recommend it just because of that super heavy price tag but do i see a difference in my skin when i use it yes okay and then the rest of this is hair stuff so i finished the we dad bite curl soft defining mousse i actually really liked this mousse it was thickening it was volumizing it was really nice i enjoyed it for a while it was Super good. It doesn't have any silicone in it, so it's nice. It's curly girl friendly. I would use this again, but I'm actually really, really loving and enjoying my Not Your Mother's Curl Mousse, and that's way more affordable than this. So I don't really see myself buying this again. Speaking of Wee Dad, okay, so I need your help. If you're a curly girl expert or like a scientist slash chemist, help me out. I'm not supposed to use any products in my hair that have silicones, obviously, because I'm on a curly girl journey. And this has dimethicone in it, which is a big no-no, obviously, and it's up there on the list. Oh, by the way, this is the Wee Dad Bite a Curl Define and Shine Styling Gel Cream. It's full. I bought this months ago, and I've only used it a few times, but I'm trying to figure out if I should give it away to a friend because it has dimethicone in it. 
but it is a peg dimethicone. Like some dimethicones say peg 13 or peg 15 or peg 11, and I don't know what that means. And I Googled it, obviously, that was my first route, but when I did that, I was even more confused. I feel like it's okay to use dimethicone if it's like a peg dimethicone because that breaks it down, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, so I don't know. I'm gonna hang on to this for now, and I will continue to do my research. But speaking of things I'm getting rid of, I have to get rid of this mousse, and I love this mousse. This is the L'Oreal Air Dry It Roughed Body Mousse. Heat free, style frizz resistant. This was a great mousse. It smells like freaking candy. The best smelling mousse ever, but it has dimethicone. It actually has more than dimethicone. It has like a bunch of silicones in it. This is a, a note for sure. This is also a no. This is the L'Oreal Boost It Volume Inject Mousse. I really like L'Oreal mousses, but man, they've got silicone. Can't use this one anymore either, giving these to my mother. And then this, I'm also getting rid of, but I'm giving it to my hairstylist because she uses it. But this is the Olaplex Number no. 6 Bond Smoother. It's a leave-in hair conditioner, and it is really nice. Makes my hair soft, super awesome, but it has silicone, so I can't use it. Same goes for the Mistress Anti-Frizz Leave-In Conditioner. Love this, super amazing, but it has silicone. Sorry, you gotta go. Even though you're full, you gotta go. We have one more Weed Ed product. Am I saying that right? Weed Ed? I hope so. Because I've been saying it this whole video with such confidence. But this is the Super Fruit Renewal Clarifying Cream Shampoo. I actually really enjoyed this. I feel like it cleaned my hair without stripping my hair. I really liked it. And it doesn't appear to have any silicones in it. So I wouldn't mind buying it again. But I do really like my Briogeo Charcoal Exfoliating Shampoo. So I use that as like my build up buster. So I don't know if I would ever repurchase this, but I did enjoy it. Speaking about a Briogeo product, I did not enjoy. And this is proof. Okay, I know I love Briogeo and I actually have a collab with them if you want to check it out It's at Briogeo.com or you can get it at Sephora I love the brand so much, but there is nothing that's gonna stop me from ever being honest on my channel And I don't like this at all at all at all at all at all, at all. This is the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Peppermint Oil Cooling Jelly Conditioner I was shocked that I didn't like this because I love the charcoal shampoo. This is the conditioner This leaves the weirdest film on my hair. It doesn't leave my hair soft I don't feel like it really conditions it at all. It's so bizarre. It felt I can't even explain it to you But every single time I use this when I got out of the shower, I regretted it. So that It's not a good sign. I'm halfway done I'm like right about here and I need to pass it on because I don't like it This is from a brand called Fido Paris and I actually don't know much about this brand Actually, let me look at the ingredients Mmm, this has sulfate in it. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see any silicone though. Anyway, this is the lightweight hydrating oil for dry and fine hair. I have very dry, very fine hair and I actually really did enjoy this leave-in. I finished the whole thing. It was really nice, super nourishing. I would totally buy it again. I really liked it. And then last but not least, we have the Living Proof Restore Mask Treatment. One of my favorite deep conditioners ever. I honestly don't understand any of the ingredients on this. This has like the craziest words on the back of this, but it doesn't appear to have silicone in it, which is nice. I definitely would repurchase this again. I've done it several times. I love this mask. I love this and my Don't Despair Repair Mask the most. Those are like my top two. That one is from Brio Gio. This is Living Proof, but it's so nourishing. It makes my hair buttery, buttery, buttery soft. Like, so soft. Okay, guys, but that's it. That completes this video. These were all the products I've recently used up. And there's more, but sometimes I forget to throw it in that bag. <laughs> but I try to make a conscious effort to throw in like skincare products or hair care products that you might want a review on or like my thoughts on. Oh, look who joined us. Porter. I can't see him. Hello. I see my buddy. He's so cute. But anyway, guys, that completes this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below letting me know what you want to see from me next. And hopefully I'll get to that video soon. But yeah, like I said, that completes this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. First two ingredients are like perfume and sodium laurel sulfate. One of my favorite deep conditioners ever. Why did I, why did I say it like that? If you're a curly girl expert or like a scientist, a chemist, or like a scientist,